Welcome in to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in. Your Jaguars, they are 1-0, headed into a big Week 2 matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs in Jacksonville. But before we get hot and heavy into that matchup, dive deep into the ins and outs of what will determine that, that contest between the Jaguars and Chiefs in Week 2. We're still kind of breaking down what happened in Week 1 between the Jaguars and Colts when the Jags went up to Indy and won their first game since 2017 in Indianapolis against the Colts. So, did our defensive standouts yesterday. Today, we're going to look at the offensive standouts for the Jaguars, a team that scored 31 points in week one. We'll get into it right now. First, if you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. Really appreciate y'all tuning in and for your support over on the website. So getting into the Jaguars offensive standouts, we do need to talk about Press Taylor. It was his first game as the Jaguars' full-time play caller, right? He's called the second half of games, according to Doug Peterson. He's called plays here and there. But this was the first game that he was the full-time play caller for your Jacksonville Jaguars. I think we can all agree that the play calling and short yardage, especially third and fourth down, has to be a a little bit better. But I do want to give Press Taylor some credit for a lot of the game plan and play calling yesterday. There were a lot of really nice things dialed up. And uh, guess what? You know, Doug Peterson, Andy Reid, they're two of the best play callers in the game, right? But even those two, sometimes they get a little bit cute at times on these third and fourth down calls, and it ends up biting them in the butt. When it goes well, you look like a genius. When it doesn't go well, you look like an idiot. So that's kind of how that goes in some of those situations. You know, I think Press Taylor, he did have some miscues, I think, trying to run a quarterback sneak. Uh, from almost three yards out on third down doesn't really make a lot of sense. I think some of the horizontal uh, plays on third and fourth down short yardage didn't make a lot of sense against this Colts defense because they do have such an aggressive and um, frankly just talented and tough and fast group of defensive linemen and linebackers. When you talk about Shaquille Leonard, EJ Speed, Zaire Franklin at linebacker, their ability to fly to the football and get downhill And then also, obviously, DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart, their defensive ends, edge players. I think they have a really good defensive front, and I think trying to go horizontal on them was a little bit of a a mistake at times in those money downs. Um, And I think you probably should have tried to attack up the field a little bit against the secondary, which was their weakness. But I digress. I think that Press Taylor had a pretty good game overall. You you saw the Jaguars at times struggle on third and fourth down last year. I don't think that that is a... A, an issue that is solely placed on Press Taylor's plate, but they got to get figured out. You, you can't be as ineffective on third and fourth down um, throughout the season as the Jaguars were in week one, bottom line. But I do give Press Taylor a lot of credit uh, for the game he called overall, and I, I give him a lot of credit for going back to Tank Bigsby right after a couple mistakes that he made. Um, in this game, in his in his debut for the Jaguars, rookie out of Auburn, really talented young running back, obviously had the drop that led to an interception, also had the fumble on the double fumble play that led to a Colts touchdown. You can't have that type of stuff. They were rookie type of mistakes, in my opinion. They were fluky type of mistakes that I don't think are going to happen a lot when you talk about Tank Bigsby. He's got really good hands. He's a really smart football player. I think he will get it figured out, and I don't think that's going to be a big issue moving forward. But you're talking about some of the criticism of Press Taylor again. I think on third and fourth down, some of the criticism is warranted, but I think he did a lot of good things. Anytime you have an offense that puts up 31 points, I think you, you had a pretty good day as an offensive coordinator, as a play caller, right? Um, let's con- continue to see how this thing goes before we you know, judge Press Taylor and say he shouldn't be calling plays for the Jaguars. Now, I will say, I mean, would I rather have Doug Peterson or Press Taylor calling plays? I think in a vacuum, you would definitely say you'd rather have Doug Peterson. He's proven that he can do this at a Super Bowl level, at a really high level. You saw him do it last year with great success with the Jaguars. But it is what it is at this point. This is the decision that Doug Peterson has made. We're going to have to see how it plays out. Now, getting into these players, Calvin Ridley and Trevor Lawrence, they were awesome. That connection was exactly what you wanted to see. Calvin Ridley had eight catches for Uh, 101 yards on 11 targets and a touchdown. He was unbelievable. Uh, He was able to get in and out of his breaks and make these defenders, which, again, a lot of these secondary players for the Colts, not the most experienced, not necessarily the most talented. But Calvin Ridley made them look 
like they did not belong on the same field as him regularly. He was awesome for the Jaguars. You know, this offense finally has a, a true wide receiver one, and now that's going to elevate everything else around him, in my opinion. You talk about Trevor Lawrence, adjusted completion percentage of 80, which is really, really good. Not quite as good as he's been against the Colts the last couple times out, but he was he was really good in this one. He was ripping shots into tight windows. You know, a, a lot of throws that most quarterbacks don't even think about making, much less completing. Trevor Lawrence was getting it done. You saw several of them to Calvin Ridley. You saw that touchdown to Zay Jones, which was an amazing grab by Zay. He was so, so good today. Uh, 2.34 um, time to throw, 2.34 seconds, was really getting the ball out quick in most of these plays, and that's not a big surprise against this Colts defense. As I mentioned, Zay Jones, that catch in the end zone was absolutely brilliant. The ability to get his body down inbounds and hold on to that football without the ball moving at all was really, really good. Top-notch stuff from Zay Jones on that touchdown. He had four first downs in this game for the Jaguars offense. He was really, really good. The type of player that you know has gone on under the radar a little bit with the addition of Calvin Ridley, and you've got Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and all these stars, uh, but Zay Jones... He's going to be critical for this Jaguars offense in 2023, his ability to make timely plays, and he did that in a big way in week one. Evan Ingram was also awesome. Got his bag this offseason a little bit. He caught all five of his targets, had a really nice grab down the sideline with a defender right there in his face. Evan Ingram was everything you wanted him to be in this one. Wasn't like some massive yardage day for Evan Ingram or anything like that, but He was what you wanted him to be for the Jacksonville Jaguars in this one. Looking at the running back room, I think Travis Etienne, he was uh, really good, really patient. I think that he had a blue-collar type of day. You didn't really think that he picked up 100 total yards, but at the end of the day, he did. And then, um, you know, was able to have that really impressive touchdown run at the end of the game to kind of seal the deal for the Jaguars offense and, and get them a W in this one. Nice touchdown run for Travis Etienne. He's on pace to do, uh, you know, exactly what you kind of expect from him. You know, on pace for over 1,600 total yards. I think he's going to have games where he looks even more explosive and more um, devastating for opposing defenses. But I said it earlier, this Colts defensive front is really talented and really well coached. DeForest Buckner, Grover Stewart in the middle. You've got Quiddy Pay, Samson Ebukam on the edge, a couple other guys that are talented as well. And those linebackers, they're about as good as it gets now. Zaire Franklin, EJ Speed, and Shaquille Leonard. Uh, so I think Travis Etienne, kudos to him for just kind of grinding it out throughout the day, both as a pass catcher and a runner. And then he he hit pay dirt late in the game, so kudos to him. Walker Little, I think when you look at the offensive line, he had the best day for the offensive line for the Jaguars played very well at left tackle he did have a penalty and 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 one pressure allowed but overall I mean you will take that all day for Walker Little um, in his first start of the 2023 season he's going to be starting for at least the next three games for the Jaguars at left tackle until Cam Robinson gets back from suspension then you're going to have a decision to make I do think like I said you want to see some improvement and execution and play calling on those money downs. We've talked about that quite a bit. You want to see the interior of the offensive line com- uh, improve. You know, Good luck against Chris Jones this weekend, obviously. But you want to see them grow throughout the season. Ben Barch coming back from injury. Luke Fortner in year two. Obviously, you're hoping Brandon Sheriff, who has the ankle, he's day-to-day. You're hoping that he's not out for very long and that he can get back to full health and, and get back in there and, and replace Tyler Shatley in the lineup. But yeah, you want to see the interior offensive line improve, but Frankly, they were going up against maybe the best interior duo in the league right now in DeForest Buckner and Grover Stewart. So I don't think it's a big thing to worry about right now. I think you want to see Anton Harrison keep improving, even though I thought he played fine in his rookie debut. You know, in pass protection, gave up a couple pressures, nothing too crazy. I thought he played pretty well overall. Anton Harrison, I think you want him to definitely improve in the run game. But as he gets caught up with the speed of this game, the speed of the regular season game in the NFL, I think you'll see Anton Harrison continue to improve. Running game, you want it to be more cohesive. You want it to be more efficient, more effective. But again, when you're up against that Colts defensive front, it's usually going to be tough sledding. And even last year when they were a really bad overall football team, their run defense was still very stout overall. So I think you know the Colts... You can look at them and say, oh, they're one of the worst teams in the NFL, and they might be, but it's not because of their defensive front. It's not because of that front seven. That's a really good unit up there. Um, Obviously, you can't have the fluky plays, right? The double fumble, 
the drop that leads to an interception. You need to be able to eliminate those types of things moving forward, unforced errors for the Jaguars. Um, so you want to get that cleaned up moving forward, especially when you're facing the Chiefs at home. They're coming off of a loss, a really disappointing loss. They're going to have extra rest compared to the Jaguars they played on Thursday night. So you want to be able to clean that up and not have those issues against one of the best teams in the league. Uh, but there is a ton of talent on this Jaguars offense. Some really good coaching, in my opinion. I do think Press Taylor is a really good coach. Doug Peterson, obviously a great coach. Um, Mike McCoy, Phil Rauscher, I just think, you know, Chad Hall, they have a really good group of coaches. They have a really good group of talent. And most importantly, they have QB1 and wide receiver one, Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley. This Jaguars offense, it's going to be a ton of fun in 2023. It really is. Folks are sitting here complaining about the Jaguars dropping 31 points in a season opener. Let that sink in, right? When did you ever think, you know, go back and tell yourself five, 10 years ago, Jaguars dropped 31 in week one against a division rival on the road, and you're going to be complaining about that. Expectations have changed around here, no doubt about it. Final note, I think at the end of the game, you saw the ability a little bit to get physical. I've been talking about that. Um, you know, with the addition of Brenton Strange and Tank Bigsby in the draft, these two were not perfect, as we've mentioned in this game. They will grow. I do believe that. But you saw at the end of the game, Brenton Strange and Tank Bigsby epitomize what I believe is a, a, a real um, asset that they will bring to this team, and that's toughness and physicality. You saw Brenton Strange kind of grab Tank Bigsby around the waist and just try to pull him forward for extra yards, and then on the very next play, Tank Bigsby punches it into the end zone. I think that those two guys and the physicality that they can bring to this offense, the energy that they can bring to this offense – is going to help the Jaguars in some tight situations, not only in 2023, but long-term. I think they're going to be two pieces that the Jaguars want to build around, and they want to be able to be fluid, this offense does. So a lot of times they're more of a finesse offense. They want to get in space. They want to beat you up that way. But they want to be able to be physical now moving forward. And I think Britton Strange and Tank Bigsby are going to help in that regard. And on that play in the red zone where Britton Strange was just pushing the pile, pushing Tank Bigsby forward, I think that play really did epitomize that whole idea, that concept for the Jaguars offense. And I think they're going to be excited about that moving forward for sure. Uh, that'll do it here for the Jaguars offensive standouts. Wanted to talk about the standouts and also talk about some of the things that maybe some people are a little bit concerned about as well. Um, I think this Jaguars offense is going to be absolutely awesome moving forward. Big test though. Week two against the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll see how it plays out. We'll get into that matchup hot and heavy later in the week. But really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoyed the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you can check out ginjag.com shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. Y'all have a good one.